we're going to add part number 10 up here and number 12 down here. The bevel should be on the outside, the flat part should be on the inside, and it will be glued to match the curve of the neck and the curve of the bottom of the jaw. So we'll put some glue on here. And on this side of the bill, This one will line up to the jaw and the neck as best you can. Wipe off any excess glue. This will go on the end of the dowel. We'll put it on first and then put glue on the outside of the dowel hold it in place, wipe off excess glue. The eyes should line up and you might want to use an extra piece to line them up. You can also put a little bit of glue on the bill to get it to stick and hold in place and these eyes should line up. Set it aside to dry. Adding part number 20. You want this wing to line up with the chest of the pelican and the top of its back. We are going to put glue here, but do not put glue here because it needs to be able to move. So we'll put the glue on this piece. We'll line up this curve with this one and this curve with this one. But we do not want to glue this part to the neck. We just want it to glue here. Set it aside to dry for about 10 minutes. We are on page number 11. You will need all of these parts. The six by 76 millimeter, uh, part number 21, 22, and a six by 25 millimeter that makes the crankshaft or the crank. And then these parts for the movable cam. Number 23, 24, 25, and two dowels that are three by 50 millimeters. First we'll assemble the crank. You take the glue and put it on the end of the dowel. Stick it through the number 21 and into the hole of 22. Might need a little more glue. These are fitting loosely. They need to be snug so that they can stay still while the other part moves. So we'll put that on. It should end up being flush. Then we'll put glue at the end of this dowel and stick it through the hole here and make it flush on this side. This no does need to stay straight, so you could support it to make sure that it's nice and straight. So it doesn't uh, present a problem when we go to turn the crank. And if you use a grid, you can make sure that it's at a perpendicular angle to that part. So it makes a nice Z shape. And we will put together the cam. This is the cam that will move. This is the top and bottom of the cage it will move in. So we will put glue on both of these dowels. They'll fit through these two holes. And 
then they're going to fit through the two outside holes of this one. There does need to be enough space for the cam to move. About a one millimeter space. You don't want it real loose, but you want it loose enough so it can move. It's If it's too tight, it won't, the crank part won't work. So we want a, a little bit of space in there. To decrease the friction when this moves, I like to put some wax on the whole outside part of this disc. It will make it slide very easily. Or if you have beeswax, that works even better because it soaks into the pores of the wood. And make sure that you have enough space. You can use um, some card spacers to be sure that there's enough space for that cam to move. It's better to be loose than too tight. If it's too tight, it won't move at all, but you don't want it so loose that it uh, has trouble with the crank. And we'll move on to the base. We are on page 10. You're going to need parts number 26, 27, and 28, which are these, two of these, one of these, and six of the dowels that are number three by 12 millimeters. Your dowels will be going into each end of those and each end of this. Let's go ahead and assemble those. Then we will be on one of these, part number 27, we're gonna be putting the 26s. You wanna be sure that you bring it close to the hole, keep them per parallel to each other and perpendicular to that part. We will glue those down. them down like that and then leave them to dry. Before we move on to the base, we need to go back to this moving mechanism. I made a mistake and glued this piece upside down. You need to have the part with the hole pointing up and we need part number, it's a th number three by 65 millimeters sticking out of this hole. So it should look like that when it's done. And remember, we need a little bit of space so that this can easily move without being having too much friction. So push that in. It will only go so far. There, it does, The hole does not go all the way through. So let's push it in how far it needs to go and set it aside to dry. Now, the base is made up of parts number 29. 29 has three holes and 30 has extra 
hole. So we want part number 29. And that hole allows for the crank shaft to push through. That's why you needed to make sure they were spaced out enough to allow for that hole to not get blocked by those two pieces. So those are glued on. Then we're going to put glue on the end of the assembled piece. You can also put it on the dowel. These will form a little box for the moving mechanism. So we're going to put one on this side. One on this side. And we're going to take this piece and start it there. Now the moving mechanism is going to go inside of here, but it will not get glued. It is just going to rest in here and be able to move up and down with the crank. Okay, we're going to put the crank into the hole. To turn it this way so I can see it. It will go through the two small dowels and through this cam. And get them all lined up just right. And once you get it through the cam, it will go through that opposite hole. You will not be gluing this. You can put some wax on the cam shaft, which is also the crank. Put some on this side so it slides smoothly. Put some on this side so it slides smoothly. You can't even put it on the whole thing before you assemble it, if that's a little easier than after you've assembled it. Again, the assembly goes through here. Maybe it'll help if I line them up first. Through here. Through the cam. And then through the other side. Like so. We're going to need the number, the other number 21 spacer on this side. We don't want it to stick to both the cam and the block frame, so we will use our plastic spacer to keep it from sticking to this wall. We do want it to stick to the cam, the camshaft, but not the wall, so it would prevent it from turning. So we'll put that glue in, stick it on, and it can go up to that plastic piece, but we don't want it so tight that we can't turn it. It can be flush on this side, and set it aside to dry. Now we're gonna finish the working mechanism with the handle in the down position and the cam as far down so that they both hang down in the same direction. 
we're going to put some glue on this dowel rod. We want the cam to stick to the dowel rod, but we want them both in the down position like this. After we get it, the glue on it, we'll shift the cam a little further over, but not let it touch the little cage. But this and this need to be both pointing down like that. And this still has to fit in the cage. And we'll let set that aside. Or actually, we can go ahead and glue on the top. So we're going to put glue on this part. And this part to make the little box for our mechanism to move in and on this part. Part number 30 has a big hole and some smaller holes. This is the top, this is the inside. So we'll make the moving mechanism go through the large hole. We'll line up the small holes with each of the pegs. And then snap it into place. and set it aside to dry. Didn't wait quite long enough before I turned the crank and I had some trouble with the cam breaking loose. So I stuck my stick in glue and put a little bit of glue on each side of the dowel rod by the cam just to ensure that it would stay put here and here. Both the crank and the cam need to be in the downward position or they both need to be in the upward position so that you can make sure that the cam and the cam and the crank, the crank is, the cam is stuck to the crank. Put some glue right in there so that it's good and stuck so when it turns it follows the same direction as the crank does and doesn't get stuck. Now we're ready to put the pelican on. We're gonna take the pelican and put the feet, the peg for the feet, into there. And to do that, we need glue all over the feet to hold them steady to the frame. This needs a good bit of glue. You can always scrape off any extra. And some on the little dowel sticking out. So it should be nice and flat. Then you're gonna line up that dowel with this. And push. This dowel will go with it. The crank in the down position. The dowel gets put into this very last part. The mouth needs to be shut as far as it will go and the dowel put into that part and you're going to want to mark the position of the dowel in that part. Make a little mark with a pencil so that you can tell how far to put the glue. So make a mark there. That will be the position for the to get full movement of the pelican. Then remove the dowel, put glue on it. You might need a little stronger glue here or if it comes out, you may have to glue it a second time. 
So you push this into that hole up to the mark. It's a little tricky. Get your hands in there. But you don't want to go beyond the mark. You want to go up to that pencil mark that you put. The mouth should be shut. Crank in the down position and push it to the mark. Oh, I can't see my mark. There's my mark. So when it's down, the mouth will be closed. When it's up, the mouth will open. I just pulled it out again. We'll try that again, pushing it into the mark. Right like that, and we're gonna let that set. Now you can prop it so that it's not uh, under any pressure. And we're going to glue on the last piece. This is where you'll put the glue. You will not put glue on there. So we'll put glue all across here. And this round part's gonna line up with this round part. This flat part will line up with here. So it should go on like that and then leave it to dry.